Spartacus led the slaves and gladiators on the path of escape. Along the way, they were constantly pursued by small groups of Roman soldiers. Fortunately for these well-trained warriors, they easily dispatched the Roman soldiers. All useful supplies were looted from the soldiers very quickly. Spartacus came up with a clever idea, intentionally leaving behind a message on the body of a nearby soldier. His aim was to lure out Glaber. Word quickly reached Rome, but Glaber didn't pay much attention to these minor incidents. As the father-in-law of the magistrate, he immediately reprimanded him. Without your support for Batiatus, none of this would have happened. Over a dozen nobles would not have been massacred, shocking all of Rome. If you can't handle this matter well, you'll never have a day in the Senate. Meanwhile, on the other side, due to their large numbers, they risked being discovered, so they had no choice but to hide in the dirty underground water. They have run out of food and are ready to go hunting. At this moment, Crixus returned with a plentiful supply of food. Spartacus demands an equal share of the food, but they only obey Crixus' orders and they were unwilling to divide the food equally. Fortunately, both of them had experienced life and death together and had developed a bond of brotherhood. Crixus attempted to persuade his brothers to listen to Spartacus. Crixus also took risks to investigate the whereabouts of his lover, Naivia. At night, Vero's wife didn't want to live this uncertain life, constantly worrying about her two children in the mountains. Without hesitation, Spartacus gave her all his savings to leave Rome with the children as soon as possible. Getting away from this dangerous place was Spartacus's best effort. Under duress, Glaber could only lead a group of soldiers to Capua. He brought his wife, Ilithia, along and coincidentally chose Batiatus's mansion as their destination. This was a psychological shadow that Ilithia would never be able to erase. Out of hatred for his father-in-law, he vented all his anger on Ilithia. She tried to argue back but to no avail, and could only accept it calmly. As she held the mask, reminiscing about everything that had happened in the past, a terrifying figure suddenly appeared behind her. Glaber heard his wife scream and rushed to her aid. It turned out that the person was Lucretia, the former mistress of the mansion. At this moment, she was in rags and was insane, resembling a beggar. Only Lucretia knew all of Ilithia's secrets. Ilithia hates her deeply and wants to kill her immediately. The accompanying adjutant stopped him in time and told Glaber that Lucretia was able to survive the massacre because it was the blessing of the gods. Proper propaganda can have a significant impact on soothing the public. It also stirs up people's enthusiasm to help us find Spartacus faster. Glaber heeded the advice. Lucretia managed to survive, and that evening, when the servants were bathing her, Ilithia cautiously approached, trying to uncover what had happened before. To her surprise, repeated and persistent questioning confirmed that Lucretia had completely lost her memory. Ilithia let down her guard completely. Meanwhile, chaos erupted underground. The gladiators were terrified upon hearing the arrival of the Roman army. Spartacus stood up at this time. Enamau suddenly arrived to inform them that Glaber was leading the army. Spartacus sincerely invited Enamaus to join him, but he was refused. Enamaus pursued ultimate glory and believed that the arena was the ultimate destination for gladiators. He had no interest in joining them. He came here to tell his former brothers that Glaber would be giving a speech at the market square early tomorrow morning. This would be the best opportunity to escape and not to foolishly confront him. Spartacus completely ignored Enamau's advice. Only when he kills Glaber to avenge his wife can the mission be considered completed. Crixus was extremely angry and firmly opposed Spartacus' impulsive decision. Given their current fighting power as gladiators, it was simply impossible to contend with Glaber's forces. Spartacus couldn't listen to any advice at this point. His mind was filled with the desire for revenge against Glaber. Early the next morning, Crixus and the brothers disguised themselves, preparing to escape southward. They came to find Spartacus for advice, but to their surprise, he had already disappeared. At that moment, he was alone in the midst of a concealed crowd. Glaber arrived with a group of soldiers. He presented Lucretia's survival as a miracle to deceive the public. He propagated that Spartacus was a brutal murderer. Anyone providing clues would be rewarded with a luxurious mansion. At this moment, a woman covered in blood was brought to the stage. It was Aurelia who was separated not long ago. She finally failed to escape from Rome. Seeing Aurelia being tortured, Spartacus was very angry. He drew his knife and rushed towards Glaber. In the midst of extreme chaos, Glaber only suffered minor skin injuries. Meanwhile, more and more soldiers surrounded Spartacus, trapping him. At this critical moment, Crixus arrived with a few of his brothers. After enduring so many hardships, Crixus had already considered Spartacus as a brother. In the midst of the battle, Crixus immediately recognized Lucretia, who had survived. 
Both of them were astonished to see each other, with the past vividly remembered. It was evident that Lucretia's acting of amnesia was quite convincing. Spartacus still wanted to engage in combat, but with Crixus' strong dissuasion, they quickly retreated together. Back in the sewer, Crixus and Mira angrily reproached his reckless behavior. A leader should possess rational thinking ability, not act like a hot-headed youth. Do you realize the severe consequences of killing labor? The Senate will be furious and send real armies to besiege us. Everyone will pay the price of their lives for your recklessness. While they were in anger, Agron arrived. Aurelia knew she was about to die and wanted to bid farewell to Spartacus. Unexpectedly, her last request before her death was for Spartacus not to disturb her son's peaceful life. She didn't want her offspring to suffer the same fate as Vero and herself. And so, Vero's wife departed, leaving Spartacus in deep sorrow with tears in his eyes. He had promised Vero to take care of his wife and children. But in the end, Aurelia lost her life because she was implicated. At this moment, he finally realized that his impulsive actions had unimaginable consequences. After resting for a few days in the sewer, they planned to escape to the south. Wherever they went, they would raise the mansions of the slave owners. He and Crixus searched for Naivia's whereabouts. At this time, the slave owners did not realize that the disaster was coming. Spartacus and his brothers charged directly into the slave owner's courtyard, eliminating all the soldiers. They then gathered all the slaves and assured them not to be afraid. They were free now, and the word master would no longer exist. Spartacus hoped that they would join the rebellion and fight against the enslavement imposed by centuries of slavery. The slaves' eyes were filled with absolute obedience to their masters. They had no courage to confront their masters. The slaves became extremely excited upon hearing Spartacus' name. But as soon as their master roared, they were instantly petrified, not daring to lift their heads or move. As soon as Crixus heard that he was the owner of this place, he immediately took him into the room and beat him up, and asked him about the whereabouts of his lover Naivia. After Crixus told about Naivia, the slave owner thought of her. Not long ago, Batiatus sent Naivia in front of these nobles, to be used for their amusement in order to gain their support. Later, Naivia was taken away in a carriage and disappeared. Hearing this, Crixus, filled with rage, punched the slave owner to death. After the victory, the duelists seized all the supplies in the slave owner's house. They enjoyed themselves to their heart's content and even took up the idea of the slave girls. Upon witnessing all these undisciplined behaviors, Agron expressed her thoughts. They should find some slaves who are proficient in combat to fight Glaber and the Roman soldiers. But these newly liberated slaves are of no value at all. If we were to confront the Roman soldiers with these slaves, it would only be sending them to their deaths. What Spartacus now wants is not a person's honor and freedom, but to rescue more slaves, and ultimately abolish the entire slave system of the Roman Empire. Bonds of slavery have been struck. Never again do you feel them tighten around your neck, robbing you of breath and life. See your own, join your brothers, and take up just cause. You will see the Romans bleed for taking us as dogs be yanked by the leash at their command. Tychus, Sophus, weapons. The idea was grand, but the reality was cruel. The mindset of slavery was deeply rooted in the hearts of every slave. At night, Spartacus and Mira prepared to be intimate with each other. Suddenly, a newly liberated slave rushed into the room to assassinate Spartacus. Mira angrily asked him, Spartacus gave him freedom, why would he retaliate for kindness? He replied, I am now the personal servant of a slave owner. My life is comfortable, and I have dignity and status. Although I lack freedom, everything is moving in a positive direction, and I am content. Instead, your unexpected arrival has disrupted my high-quality life. It was at this moment that Spartacus finally understood. The physical liberation of slaves was easy, but how could the deeply ingrained slave mentality be saved? Therefore, he decided to use the estate as a temporary training ground, postponing their plan to escape to the south. Like Enamaus, he would train the slaves to gain their trust and integrate them into the rebellion as soon as possible. At night, an army came from a distance with torches. If we let them discover our whereabouts, we will be at risk of being surrounded. Spartacus sent Nasir to handle the situation. A few fully armed Roman soldiers approached, and Nasir acted accordingly. After a few minutes, the soldiers' suspicions were dispelled. It turned out that the Roman soldiers were just patrolling as usual. As the soldiers were about to leave, one of them glanced at Nasir. 
Nasir suddenly invited the soldiers into the house. The people inside the house instantly became furious and rushed out to fight. Facing the chaotic scene of soldiers fighting, Nasir hesitated for a moment. But he quickly picked up a sword from the ground and charged towards Spartacus. Crixus rushed forward and grabbed Nasir by the neck, demanding to know why he didn't let the soldiers leave. Nasir quickly explained that the soldiers noticed the absence of the slave collar around his neck, and if he had let them go, a large force would have arrived soon after. The misunderstanding about Nasir was finally cleared, and Spartacus greatly appreciated him. The training they had undergone paid off. From then on, Nasir gained the recognition of his brothers and officially joined the rebellion. How could Roman soldiers give up? The road to resistance in the future is destined to be full of ups and downs.